Top 10, top I got a top 10, ten. Top ten. Got my motivation high for my top 10 Gotta learn from the wise women and men Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know you've got something greater inside you as well. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. So get ready to outwork everyone, get obsessed, and take action with Ed Milet and my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume 10. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, outwork everyone. I'm addicted to one more. And so I want your mantra going forward to be one more. What does that look like if we're working out? That means when we're in the gym and we say, I'm gonna do five sets of 10, I'm crazy. Like I'm a psycho, cause I wanna win. I wanna be somebody, I wanna separate. I wanna compete. And the way I do that isn't with my giftedness. Cause I wasn't born with a bunch of gifts and I think gifts are crap. I think for the most part, gifted people struggle in life because things come easy to them. I like that things haven't come easy for me in my life. I like they don't have natural talents in every area. And maybe you like that about you too. Maybe you've looked at yourself all your life and thought, man, I don't have that natural beauty or that natural talent or this gift for creativity or intellect or humor. I don't have any of those things. But what I got is I will outwork you. And so at the gym, one of the things I focus on, they say it's five sets of 10. When I'm at 10, I go one more, bam, 11. If I'm running on the treadmill and it's a 45 minute run, I never finish at 45. I always go one more minute, 46. If I'm at the office and I'm supposed to make 25 phone calls that day, when I'm at the end of the day, I always do one more. If I've got meetings, I always do one more. My mantra for three decades in business has been one more. Rule number two, get obsessed. Let's talk first of all about getting laser focused. And I mean this as your friend. I mean this talking to myself too. I always cover things that make me better, things that I struggle with. But I gotta tell you, I think there's a different level for you. I mean, I think there's a different level for you to get obsessed, crazy laser focused. I say all the time, our obsessions become our possessions but we won't possess them if we're not truly obsessed. I bet there's been a person in your life you've been obsessed with. If you're over 20 years old, listen to this, more than likely you've had somebody you were pretty obsessed with, haven't you? That you wanted in your life, you wanted to date, you wanted as a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a significant other. How many times a day did you think about them? How many times a day did they distract you from what you were doing with just the thought of them? In other words, this is what I want you to understand. When you're laser obsessed focused, your obsession distracts you from what you're currently doing, not the other way around. You're not really obsessed with it if you're easily distracted from it. This is so important. You right now can test whether it's your obsession with whether it distracts you constantly. The first thing you think of when you wake up, last thing before you go to bed. When you have a big laugh, it comes up. When you cry, it comes up. When you're watching TV, it comes up. When you're doing your regular job, but it's your side hustle, it comes up. You can't stop thinking about it. It distracts you from the rest of your life. That's what an obsession does. When it's not really your obsession, the rest of your life distracts you from it. And so the it in your life is so important. But there's all these things that distract us today. I'm gonna to give you a recommendation. Turn your damn TV off. Turn the radio off most of the time. Turn your phone off a lot too. Rule number three, take action. You gotta rise up. You gotta make your dreams a reality and live a damn masterpiece. You know this. Now, here's the thing, a couple things. You gotta make a decision. Listen to me. You gotta make a decision. What's the decision? What's the thing you came here for? Now we're at the moment. The clock is ticking. People say all the time, hey, life is short. Let me tell you something. Life can be long. You bury your dreams, you quit this, life gets long. See, time's relative. Two minutes of you being with your sweetie, doing whatever you like to do with them, that can go by quick, right? What's about the last two minutes on a treadmill? Does that not seem like it goes by for like four hours, right? So if you're enjoying it, it's short. If it's painful, it's long. Life can be long. You want a life that feels like it's flying by. You want a life like I have right now where I go, can I just press pause? Can I just press pause? It's so good, it's so great, it's so rewarding, it's so awesome. 
but I don't really want to press pause because I know it can get better. So what's the decision? What have you been sitting on? What is it? Is it people are texting me, hey Ed, I, I submitted my resignation last night. I'm coming full time. I walked away from a six figure job. Is that the decision? Is it the decision to finally get serious? Is it the decision to get licensed? Is it the decision to stop worrying about what people think? Is it the decision to become a great closer? Is it the decision to something in a relationship you have you need to get out or into? It's only a thought if you don't take an action. The difference between a thought and a decision, there's an action. So we know and you know you just decided and you know what it is. You know what it is. You will have really decided if within this next hour you took some step towards it. Something. A note you write. A text you send. A, a, a decision you've made. Something you do that you follow up with the action to make it real. Rule number four, stop the comparison game. It's not the success of people you know that's making you unhappy. It's you're comparing your situation to the success they're having that creates unhappiness in your life. So for those of you that are struggling and saying, you know, one of the things I suffer from is I'm just not very happy very often, I can tell you that that presence of unhappiness, you will always link to a comparison of some sort, either in your own life or in other people's lives. And just being aware of that fact and stopping the comparison, embracing this moment, embracing this time, knowing that you can't go back to that previous time, knowing that you can't be in somebody else's life. You're not going to have that other body right now. And so if you're looking to be happier, I can promise you the number one key that I would give you is to stop the comparison game. You'd say, well, that's not completely true. I mean, what if someone passes away? That makes me unhappy. There's no comparison there. Let's take the most extreme example. Or when someone's sick in my family, uh, you know, someone in my family's got a really bad illness, uh, that makes me unhappy. That's not a comparison. In fact, it is. The fact of the matter is that when someone gets sick in your family or passes away, what you do in your mind is you compare it to when they were healthy. So that comparison of I wish they were healthier again, that is a comparison between the previous situation and the current condition. If someone passes away, it's comparing the time that you had them. That's why people say, if I could just have one more moment with them, if I could just have another conversation, it's comparing it to when you had the moment, it's comparing it to when you had the conversation. And so those are extreme examples, but if we reduce it all the way down to anything right now in your life that you say, it brings me unhappiness, there's no joy there. There's a comparison happening that's not serving you. Also, if you want to have more confidence, check out my 254 series. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. The minute you begin to get external in your life, worrying about what other people think about you, right? You've, uh, you've lost all control you, and, it, and it never fills you up. Rule number five, alter your daily choices. The power of choice is critical in our lives. I want you to think about something right now. What are five of the most important choices you've made in your life? Just think about that for a second. Begin to list them off in your head. Five of the most important choices you've made in your life. Maybe it was a decision to get involved in a particular business or to leave a particular business. Maybe it was a decision to get involved with a particular person or to become uninvolved with a particular person. Maybe it was a friend that you chose to walk across the room and meet and it changed your life. Maybe it was a friend that you had to walk away from in order to improve your life. What are the five most important choices of your life? Just think about them for a second. And if you altered those five choices, good, bad, or indifferent, how different would your life be today? Because I'm a believer that there's everyday choices we make that when you stack them up, they make a massive difference in our life. But I'm also a believer that there are between five and 10, a handful of moments in everybody's life that if we make the proper choices in those moments, the complete trajectory of our life changes. And I think as you just asked yourself that question, you may say there haven't been five, there's been two. What were they? And how'd they alter the direction of your life? Rule number six, look back 60 to 90 days. When I'm having a difficult time in my life in one area or another, all I have to really do is look back 60 to 90 days and it's the behaviors I had 60 to 90 days ago that are causing the results I get negatively right now. 
And so, like, for example, when I'm not really you know, progressing in my career or in my financial situation, if I look back 60 to 90 days prior, I stopped reading the books, listening to the audios, doing the things that grow my identity, and I pay the price 60 to 90 days later. In my body, when my body isn't looking like I want it to, if I look back 60 to 90, 120 days, that's when my diet got weaker. That's when my workouts weren't quite as intense as they were previously, and I pay the price three to four months later. This is true in every area of our life. Our lives are almost like reading a newspaper today, but we're reading the headlines from 90 days ago. And so that's what confuses people. They see the external results of their life, but if you did, if you read the newspaper from 90 to 120 days ago, that's where the news was made, not today. And so in every area of your life, you got it going right now, you got to fuel the fire. If you've got your business going, your finances going, your relationship going, your faith going where you want it to, you have to continue to do the activities that got you here in the first place because 90 days from now, you're going to read today's news. That's how it works. Rule number seven, choose the life you want. It's a hard thing to accept, but in our lives, we are getting out of our life right now exactly what we believe we're worthy of exactly what we think we deserve. Our life is a direct reflection of our identity, which is the thoughts, concepts, beliefs, values, and worth we hold true to be about ourselves. And so as hard as it is to accept, we're getting out of life right now what we believe we're worth. And we believe we're worth it because of these patterns and our identity and our lack of choosing to have what we want. Not just the material things, not just the body fat, not just the body weight, not just the amount of money, not just having the relationship, but choosing the emotion we want. The level above all this stuff I discuss, and the level way down here where the people discover the basic stuff, then there's what I've been covering. The highest level is to choose the emotions we want to experience and to begin to run patterns that serve us and eliminate the ones who move us further from them. Rule number eight, write your own story. I want you to think about something real quick. See, there's a book being written about your life. Isn't there? Someone somewhere has taken inventory of your life. Don't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter 10. You write your own book. And at any moment in your life, you can decide that you want to make this the new chapter. You're literally in your life, you can turn the page. And those previous chapters are your old book. It's like Old Testament, New Testament. Old story, new story. They're connected, they're related, but you can flip the page and you can have a whole new story. If you decided right now, I am literally turning, my breakthrough is I turn the page and in this second, I start to write the best chapters of my life. You could decide to do that. Rule number nine, don't let your ego hold you back. If you meet people that you think are egomaniacs that are constantly bragging about themselves, these are the most insecure people that you know. They're the most fearful people that you know. They're the most scared and they're usually the least happy. And so, but I'm gonna say something to you. I want you to consider as I go through ego today, I know you think, wow, I'm so down on myself, how could I have an ego? It's actually the people that are down on themselves that actually have their ego materialize and show up more often than they think. And it's their ego that may actually be holding them back. You think, wow, how could someone with low self-esteem have a big ego? Well, trust me, they do. And so egos are not part of people with high self-esteem. The people in my life that are the most self-confident typically don't have big egos. If you have to wait around for other people to tell you, hey, your ego's out of control, it's too late usually. So we've gotta be able to see our ego when it rears its head, be aware of it, and it loses its power over us. We can go back to being our real selves. You can't love yourself if you're not being yourself. You can't love yourself if you're not being yourself. When ego shows up, we're not ourselves. We're not connected to God. In other words, if you can let go of your ego, you can let God in. When you can let go of your ego, you can let your real confidence in. When you let go of your ego, you can go really become who you were born to be. And so oftentimes, this is so important you get, you may be losing right now because of your ego. Because of your ego, because you're not feeling good about yourself. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is change your identity. I think the thing that holds most people back is their identity. And so I'm pretty good at getting people to change their identity. In other words, your identity is the thoughts, concepts, beliefs, values that you hold to be true about yourself. And your life is going to be very consistent with that. Your identity is, for the most part, in the room right next to me, I, I can see it, but you can't. There's a thermostat sitting on the wall in there. That thermostat regulates the temperature of the room. It's set at 75 degrees. So right now I opened up the doors. It's a cold, rainy day here. I live right on the ocean. 
a bunch of cold air is blowing in here right now, but the room's not going to cool down to the external conditions. The room's going to heat back up to 75 degrees because that thermostat will heat the room up to get it to the temperature it's set at. It's identity. If I open that door and hot air blew in here, which probably is now that I'm starting to talk, <laughs> the air conditioner will turn on and cool that room back to 75 degrees. It regulates the temperature. Your identity regulates the temperature of your life. No matter what happens, the external conditions can get better and better and better. You're making more money or you're more fit or you're in a better relationship. But if you don't change your identity, it's, if you're a 75 degree or and you're getting 85, 90, 95 degrees of results, you'll find a way over a pretty short period of time to turn the air conditioner back down and get those areas right back to what your identity is. And that's why you'll see people get ahead and then come back, lose weight and gain it, get in a great relationship and lose it, make a bunch of money and get back. Now I have a special bonus cup from Ed on how to be patient that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching the video to taking action here we go. Question number one, what's the identity change that you need to make? Number two, what's one daily choice that you can alter starting today? And number three, who do you need to stop comparing yourself to? And if you like this video and you're going to take action after watching it, give me a hashtag believe down in the comments as well. See today, one of the reasons so many people are confused about their lack of success is because we live in a very immediate gratification type society meaning people expect results to happen instantaneously because we can get access to information instantaneously. We can get on social media, we can get music, we can get a movie, we can get a Google search, we can get a book, we can get anything we want instantaneously. But what you can't get instantaneously is success in life. And we've been raised in a generation now, many of us, even older guys like me, we're programmed to get things right now. And this hurts us in life because we don't realize the echoes of life. If you want more Ed Milet, check out the top 50 rules video I made on him. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. To the person you were destined to be, ever in your life. The thing that's gonna kill your dream is your addiction to other people's approval. I'm constantly in a crisis.